Welcome to the Jurassic Park cast, the Jurassic Park podcast where guests chat with me about Michael Crichton's 1990 novel Jurassic Park, and also not that too. My name's Ryan Rogers, and I'm a big, dumb Jurassic Park fan. Thanks for joining me today. This is going to be an excerpt from episode 36, Nedry, where I'm going to dig deeper into this little moment in the text that sticks out when you read it. And because it sticks out, I spent some time looking at it and considering what does it mean. But before we get into that, I want to express my continued thanks to Christoph Oaks of Snail, S-N-A-L-E. Uh, check out his incredible albums on Spotify and Bandcamp. Today's intro is from the song Super Groovy, and the outro song is T-Shirts. All right, so let's just to get on the same page here. Here is the excerpt from the chapter Nedry on page 134 that I will be referencing. Quote, Nedry'd been damn careful, even to the point of making Dodson meet him at the San Francisco airport at the last minute with an excuse about wanting to see the money. Actually, Nedry wanted to record his conversation with Dodson, mention him by name on the tape, just so that Dodson wouldn't forget he owed the rest of the money. Nedry was including a copy of the tape with the embryos. In short, Nedry had thought of everything. Except this damn storm. Something dashed across the road. A white flash in his headlights. It looked like a large rat. It scurried into the underbrush, dragging a fat tail. Possum. Amazing that a possum could survive here. You'd think the dinosaurs would get an animal like that. End quote. Why, in this chapter where Nedry is escaping into a tropical storm, getting lost in the jungle and being eviscerated by Dilophosaurus, does Crichton stick this little moment in the text where an animal scurries across the road? What a strange thing for Nedry to be considering while he's running his plan through his mind over and over again. As you're tensely reading through this terrifying chapter, on its surface, having a rat dart across the road doesn't really seem to fit in. It doesn't apparently connect with Nedry's scheme. It doesn't add any further tension to his drive to the East Dock. It doesn't have anything to do with the novel's greater themes of hubris or Jurassic Park's systems of control. What is it doing here? In episode 36, I looked a little bit more closely into it. I considered that this rodent, this possum that runs across the road is an analogy to Dennis Nedry. See what you think. Quote, something dashed across the road, a white flash in his headlights on 194. And this reminds us of the something that ran across the road before the Tyrannosaur attack uh, just a few pages earlier, doesn't it? We believe that that was a dinosaur, but are unsure. It happens again. This time, it's something that looks like a large rat. In this case, it's a possum. Nedry feels it's amazing. You'd think the dinosaur would get an animal like that, he says. This is such a throwaway paragraph stuffed into this exciting chapter with no payoff. It begs for a closer reading to make sense of why Crichton put that in there. So let's unpack it. We can agree the possum is described, quote, like a rat. And a rat is an unwanted pest. They're destructive, hard to eradicate, and are carriers of disease. We don't like rats. The possum should be seen as like a rat for our purposes. Now, it has a, quote, fat tail. And now this rat, like animal, is being betrothed with a characteristic that's been affiliated with Nedry repeatedly throughout the novel. He's a, quote, fat college kid on 193, a messy fat man on 100, and he's a fat, a fat slob on 201, as well as a sloppy eater. We can see some allegorical connective tissues being made here. Nedry shares similar characteristics with the possum. They both have fatness and are destructive, unwanted vermin. Quote, you'd think the dinosaurs would get an animal like that, is Nedry's next thought. And the next thing we know, the closest character we have to being a, quote, rat, Dennis Nedry, has a dinosaur get him. Here's the best part. The possum survives. Nedry may be seen as less than vermin by this allegory. And by the time Muldoon and Gennaro find Nedry's corpse, there'll be no mistake. He's utterly despised, unsympathetically left behind for his body to be scavenged by choice. Gennaro says, should we take him? And Muldoon opts, chooses, prefers that Nedry be left beneath a small pack of scavenging procomsignathuses. Muldoon all but says the dinosaurs will take care of an animal like that. Just like what Nedry thought earlier. This is a quick little moment that we breeze right by, but it sticks out, calling for us to go back and check it out, and it reveals itself to carry so much more allegory and insight into the reading of Jurassic Park, and I think it's brilliant. And why this novel lends itself to rereads so well. All right, (laughs) there it is. But what do you think? Have I read too much into it? 
Or do you believe this is just another example of the keen details and clever inclusions Crichton added to the text, which makes Jurassic Park the favorite novel for so many of us? Because there's always some new little detail or inclusion that begs for us to look a little bit more closely at it when we're doing a reread. All right. A big thank you to you for tuning in. If you're interested in more of the podcast, you can find it wherever podcasts are. And just look for Jurassic Park Cast. Include those hyphens if you like, or just Jurassic Park Podcast. That might work too. And if you like the videos, uh, you can like and subscribe and receive notifications when a new one is available. Uh, There is a lot more to come. Until next time.